um, um, a rat. Okay, so that's um, that's the story. So th this is. I, I emphasize that it, it's a good thing. Um, I, I, I should have put this whole table uh, from the previous slide. Um, <laughs> well, I should have made it correct, and I should have put it on, on the board. Um, it's it's really important to to get this table straight in your head. Um, that that's that's how you you take mathematical things and, and put them into atlas. Um, the, the, these are the the ingredients. Um, anyway, I'm not gonna try to talk about that anymore. So now that I have characters of Cartan subgroups, I I should start talking about the Langlands classification, but I'm look, let me just just say um, well so 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 here's the approximate Langlands classification. <coughs> So, G of R hat is in one-to-one -one correspondence with pairs A H of R um, and, and a, 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 a character of, of H of R. Um, so, so this is a real Cartan in G of R, and th these things are considered up, up to G of R conjugation. Um, well, that's not very atlasy. Really, what we'll do um, These things are considered modulo conjugation by by k. Excuse me, what does yes. the rational type mean? Um, so is this Q business? It's this Q business. Right. Yes. Um, oh, it's a so Q. I the, the, the character on on the split part of the torus is given by a rational vector rather than a complex vector. Um, Yes, that, that, that's, that's right. Um, yes. Can you repeat again what type of 
So it, in what, what I, the, the setting here it is uh, I'm, I'm going to fix theta on, on G, um, well, theta G uh, on G, and K it is um, the, the fixed points of, of, of theta G, and uh, look at uh, all uh, theta G stable uh, H, and, and this is uh, a decay conjugation. Um, this is the mathematical point of view, um, but it's not what Atlas does. Um, so, um, what Atlas is going to do is fix H and uh, look at um, all G conjugate uh, thetas uh, uh, which preserve this fixed H. Um, and it, it takes a lot of uh, good wine to convince yourself that this is really okay. Um, that that uh, I'm going to talk about this later. Good, but um, so uh, oh, okay. So th this is the approximate. <coughs> Story that, that uh, to give a representation of G, you have to give some theta, well, some real Cartan subgroup and, and a character of it, and um, well, and and that's the correspondence. To make any, to get any understanding of of what this can mean, uh, is difficult, and. That, that's what I, what I want to focus on. Um, uh, so, so first let me say uh, well, I'll leave this uh, okay. Um, So, so, so what's approximate? So, everything. Uh, but one of the really fundamental issues is row shift. And this goes back goes back a very long way. Uh, for our purposes, the, the theorem um, is, it, it's Harishandra's theorem is that a, a discrete series representation of, of G of R corresponds to a pair T of R that this is a, a, a compact um, Cartan subgroup. Um, and well, I, I'll, I'll put Lambda, th this lambda th this is a character of, of, of the well 
I'll, I'll, I'll just say that lambda is in x upper star of, of t plus rho. Um, and it, it, it's required to be regular. So, so there, there's a, a precise theorem, and, and this is up to G of R conjugation. So Harshandra says that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between discrete series representations of a real group and pairs consisting of a compact Python subgroup and something which is, if I just had this x upper star of t, that would be a character of, of t of r. But there's this damn shift by uh, a half sum of positive roots. Um, and, and there it is. That, that, that's that's the, the theorem. Um, what I'll, I'll just say a couple of um, things about this. Um, So, first one it, it is that if delta plus and delta plus prime are, are, are two positive systems, um, for uh, well, for, for for this. Anyway, for, for, for T, uh, then the, this row, the half sum of these positive roots and the half sum of these positive roots is um, well, it, it, it belongs to X upper star. And the result is that this set x upper star of t plus rho doesn't depend um, on, uh, on the choice of positive roots. So it looks like you're just making trouble for yourself. Um, you, you, you can identify, oh, I, I'm not supposed to use the, the green, well, you, you, you have this identification, x upper star of t plus rho with, with x upper star of, of t that sends lambda to, to lambda minus rho. So, can't you just have a Harshandra theorem with no row shift, just, just shift everything? And the answer is no, it doesn't work. Um, the, the Harshandra theorem says that it's this thing, which is supposed to be regular, that, that's one reason that it, it's better. And, and, and the other thing is that this map uh, does depend on the choice of delta plus. So because of those two things, the, there's no way to, to reformulate Harshandra's theorem without the row. I mean, well, you, you can, but it, it it's much more complicated. So we have to understand those row shifts and where they come from. Um, so the the second um, 
So, uh, right, um, so, I, I, the, the, the construction of, of, of the discrete series, um, well, I'll call it pi of lambda, um, with, with this parameter uh, uses uh, a, a positive system making this lambda dominant. So the the, sorry? No, no. The 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 bijection uh, lambda is regular here, and and so the positive system making it dominant is unique, um, and and you know so, it, but but it's well, it, it it's it, it it's. Defined by lambda, but it's it's used. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's, yes. So, uh, well, so 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 one issue is where does this. Um, That, that, that's a part of um, the issue, uh, and the, the related issue is how do you look at, at, at a, a, a representation and <clears throat> extract this weight. The, the, well, you, you want to extract. Um, uh, a Cartan subgroup uh, plus plus a character. It it, it arbitrary. Uh, I mean, discrete series are an important case to understand, but we, we want to know in general. Uh, and so. Both of these questions are, are tied up with Lie algebra cohomology. And so I, I have some slides uh, which I, I just pasted into here from someplace else. They're, they're not fixed up decently. Um, but, well, here they are. I want to start with a, a Lie algebra, um, <coughs> which in for us is going to be the the no radical of some parabolic subalgebra in a reductive Lie algebra G, and I want to study the functor of taking n fixed vectors. So. Um, If I look at the category of representations of n, then I, I have this functor. I mean, m of n is, is, is representations of the, the Lie algebra n. And if I have something in there, I, I, I can define v upper n is v and v such, such that xv is 0 for all x in, in n, and, and this is uh, a, a vector space. Um, so so <clears throat> I, I get this functor uh, from, from m of n uh, to uh, vector spaces. 
Um, and what, what the theorem says is that um, if n is an ideal in, in some larger b, uh, then this v upper n is a, a, a b mod n module. And so uh, I, I get a, a, a functor that goes from B modules to <clears throat> B mod N modules. Sorry, can you rotate the screen? Sorry? Can you rotate the screen? Ah, sorry. Uh, 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 um, yeah, sorry, and, and, and B is a B module. Sorry. Yes. Um, uh, so, this, this functor is left exact. It's uh, not right exact, except in the case that n is zero. Uh, and the definition is that the pth Lie algebra cohomology is the pth right derived functor of uh, taking an invariance. So what, is, what does that mean? Uh, if, if you take an injective resolution of B as, as a module for the enveloping algebra, then the way you get the, the p Lie algebra cohomology of B is you, you take n invariance in this injective resolution and you take the cohomology. Another way to, well, if, if you choose a, some standard injective resolution, then you, you can find that the, this Lie algebra cohomology can be computed from a complex where the pth term is just complex linear maps from the pth exterior power of n into v. And, and again, if, if uh, n is an ideal in v and, and v is a v module, the, these cohomology groups become v mod n module. Um, and, well, the, one of the main properties of cohomology is long exact sequences. If, if you start with a short exact sequence of n modules, then you get a long exact sequence in cohomology. So, so I said, if you, this H0 is n invariance. And I said that H0 was left exact. So, so when I take n invariance on this short exact sequence, I get a left exact sequence. And what happens is that it continues to the H1 of this first term and on like that. Uh, and from, from this calculation using exterior algebras, you see that the homology goes up only to the dimension of n. Okay. Um, so I, I think the next slide has the representation theory. Okay. So so here's one of the settings where we want to do this. Back back to this uh, ah shoot. This, yeah, this is what I said. I, I didn't clean up these slides, and in particular, I didn't change to the notation that we're using here. Uh, I'll do that with these slides later today. Um, but so, so this, this should be K of R and, well, the containment. Uh, we're, we've been writing the containment in the other direction. Um, but, uh, the, 
the, the, the, this is what we've been calling KLR. Uh, so if, if you have um, the, this G, this Lie algebra G here is the complexified Lie algebra. This, this G is, is the way we've been writing it. And so I, I want to start with a Levy decomposition of a parabolic subalgebra of G, and I want to assume that the, the Levy factor is theta stable. Um, and, and then you, you get another one of these pairs uh, on the level of the Levy. Um, and the statement is that Lie algebra cohomology is, these give you cohomological functors. Cohomological functors means that you have these long exact sequences that I wrote on the previous slide. Uh, going from GK modules to L, L intersection K modules. And they, they carry modules of finite length to modules of finite length. So th this idea of finite length is closely related to quasi-simple. To, to prove the theorem, you, you need to understand what the center of the enveloping algebra is doing. Uh, so I'll, I'll remind you of something which is basically in Humphrey's book. If you have a, a parabolic like this, then, I mean a Levy decomposition of the parabolic, then Poincaré Berkhoff fit says that the enveloping algebra is tensor product of these three pieces, and that decomposition gives you a linear projection from U of G to U of L. And if you restrict that linear projection to the centralizer of the center of L, then it's an algebra homomorphism. Um, and so, so here's the Castleman Osborne theorem. It says that if you have a G module V, then first of all, there's a way to make the center of the enveloping algebra act on the Lie algebra cohomology. I already said that L acts on the Lie algebra cohomology, and these two things are related by this projection. The, the way an element of the center acts on a cohomology class is you, you project the element of the center into U of L, and you make that L thing act on the cohomology class. So, what, did I keep one more slide? No. Nope. Um, so, what, um, let's see. So uh, I'll, I'll just um, so invariance, then 
this is an algebra homomorphism. And in particular, th this has in it the center of the enveloping algebra. And so th this is the, the Chevrolet map. And it, it's an injection. Uh, and the, the, the theorem is that C is an isomorphism onto um, the twisted invariants of, of W. Um, so I, I'm not going to try to write exactly um, what the, the twisting is, but, but this is the, the, the row shift issue. Um, and look, maybe, uh, let me let, let me call this C tilde. Um, so if, if you have uh, some some phi in H star, uh, you you get C tilde phi mapping Z of G uh, to to C. And the definition is C tilde phi uh, at an element z is C tilde of z evaluated at, at, at phi. So the, you can evaluate polynomials here at elements of h star. And the, this is a, an algebra homomorphism. Uh, from Z of G to, uh, to, to C. Um, and the, the, what the Chevrolet theorem says it is that this C tilde sub V is equal to C tilde sub P prime if and only if uh, phi plus rho. Uh,